2021, Bo Burnham released Inside, his third Netflix stand-up special, which is very unique from the other Netflix specials he released. In it, he took the same comedy stylings he was best known for in stand-up comedy, but what made this special unique is that it was a blurring between fiction and reality as much as it was a comedy and tragedy. One aspect of this is the behind-the-scenes moments we get integrated in between sketches. In a way, comparing to how many of us have been trying to cope in a time where social contact was very limited. As he goes on filming, we see more of the real Bo Burnham. Some points he's lying on the floor while telling a joke or trying to distract from any anxiety by filming in very different ways. Now, Burnham has not been shy about his struggles with his public identity. This took full form back in his last special, Make Happy, a stand-up show which evolved from a funny experience to a closer look to his role as an entertainer to an audience. Inside is a much darker perspective with a bit of light-hearted tones, adding to the mystique of what Bo Burnham would be like without an audience. We've seen glimpses of it in the film 8th Grade, and the nods to social media where Bo Burnham got his start shows Burnham's awareness of the tethering of the line between art and product, and the tools of fame and celebrity culture which affect those who are around it and those who consume it. While Burnham understands the struggles and laughs through the pain, there's a reason why we allude to the darker side of fame at many times. And those are the times that Joji decides to navigate. Like Burnham, Joji got his start on the internet. At one point, you couldn't go on YouTube without hearing the words Filthy Frank. Through making this Filthy Frank content, Joji garnered a wide fan base and lore that rivaled the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, he left all of that behind when it took a toll on his physical and mental health. So Joji understood the difficulties balancing a public persona and his private life especially when the public persona wasn't really his. However, through 2019 through 2020, he rolled out several music videos promoting his album Nectar. And these music videos channel a very interesting idea of how Joji saw fame. These series of videos tackled the question of what it meant to leave a legacy. And through this loosely interconnected story, Joji examined the costs of fame, the inner loneliness of Run, the destruction of ego in Gimme Love, and the cost of maintaining identity in Daylight and Sanctuary. Now, these set of videos were part of a video essay created by Internet Impact, formerly known as Psych IRL, and their examination into the videos, included with the story of Joji that we know now, adds to the understanding Joji has in how fame seems to control a person, and the things we don't exactly see behind the curtain. In a way, both Burnham and Joji are breakthrough internet personalities cut from the same cloth. Both became known for comedy that seemed very edgy, but both had artistic merits which seemed to take front and center in their artistic evolutions. In an age where the people larger than life are coming through by means of social media, it seems clear that the best artists are the ones that use social media to strengthen their artistic means and not be consumed by it. In a way, we can learn from artists formerly on the internet, but refuse to see themselves as social media influencers, not letting metrics dictate what we do artistically, and know that our public personalities is more than just a face on a picture or a video. We are all making art, and we're all making a product, and there's nothing wrong with accepting that we can't be what the world thinks we are. And those differences can be very powerful. For example, it's one thing to make a sarcastic anthem about a mogul for a big-name company. It's another thing to leak footage of said mogul during work hours. 